So what subject would you like to talk about today? Okay. Okay, soulmates. Yeah. <laughs> so the over the overwhelming feeling is soulmates, is that okay, okay. Well I'll go along with you. And we'll talk <laughs> we'll talk about soulmates. And can I just ask the question though, why is that such an overwhelming thing to talk about for you at the moment? You mean <laughs> we're needy for our soulmates? Is that the <laughs> okay? <laughs> well, that's one of the things we'll definitely need to address <laughs> in the discussion. Yeah. All right. Um, well, what I'm going to do first then is give you a little summary of the technicalities of soulmates, and then we'll get into the emotions regarding soulmates. How does that sound? Um, it's important to understand the technicalities regarding soulmates, the real spiritual truth, if you like, the divine truth about soulmates, because it actually does affect a lot of your life without many people even knowing it affects their life. And so that's why it's quite important to allow yourself to understand the truth about how the soulmate thing works. Because what I notice a lot of times is people think that you can choose your soulmate. You know, like, oh, that guy's nice and handsome, and he's got a life, and he's, got, he's, got, he's quite wealthy, that's my soulmate, right? <laughs> or that girl's got a nice figure, and you know, she's like pretty, and whatever, that's my soulmate, and it's not like that at all. And then a lot of us get into this state with God with the, regard to the soulmate issue, because it's not like I'm choosing my soulmate, a lot of times we start feeling that we don't have free will. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, your partner's already chosen for you, so does that mean you've got free will? And that's a question that people ask, you know. They say, oh, it can't be, it can't be uh, true because we all have free will and so therefore it, it would break the law of free will, so therefore this soulmate issue can't be true. Does that make sense? So a lot of times uh, people, including my own mother, actually feels that way. So um, a lot of people have a lot of different emotional injuries regarding the soulmate connection, which, which we need to talk about. So let's look at it from a technical point of view in the first few hours or so and then we'll go into the emotions of it all because it's the emotion of it all that's very, very interesting. So let's start with God. Who has masculine and feminine qualities and God creates souls that all have masculine and feminine qualities. So let's grab one of those souls over there, one of God's children. And what happens now? For this, I'm going to describe the place for the, the description of a heterosexual soul. But that doesn't mean that, uh, and by the way, there is no such thing as a heterosexual soul or a homosexual soul. There is just a soul that all has varying qualities of, ma of masculine and feminine characteristics. Now, when the masculine characteristics become dominant, when, when the soul separates into the two halves, it separates into two male forms. If the feminine characteristics are dominant, then when the soul separates, the f it'll separate into two female forms because the feminine characteristics are dominant. But for many souls, there's a huge range of masculine and feminine characteristics. If you draw a standard dis distribution curve about the issue, and let's say this is masculinity and this is femininity, right? You can see that like 80 or 90%, whatever it is in the standard distribution curve, fit between there. They will be, they will be called, when they, when they incarnate, you could say they will be heterosexual, right? That's not how you spell heterosexual either. But anyway, it's hetero, et, right? And obviously on the male dominant side in this area here, the souls that incarnate there are going to be masculine, male-based, homosexual. Right? And obviously the souls that incarnate that have a dominant of female characteristics with some, still got male characteristics of course, but they will have, they will separate into, you could call it female homosexual, couldn't you? All right. Notice it doesn't give any room for bisexuality. 
which is a very confronting thing for most people nowadays because a bisexuality movement, if we could call it that, is growing in its intensity and it, and it comes from a confusion of our own sexual attractions. And, and one of the things I'd like to talk about today is how our sexual attractions become so confused. Because the truth is that we can actually be a heterosexual soul but in a homosexual relationship and feel quite comfortable until we start opening the soulmate part of our soul. And I want to talk about that too, what that means to open up the soulmate part of your soul. Well, you can also be in a homosexual, sorry, a, a heterosexual relationship and be quite comfortable but actually be gay. You can actually be homosexual in those relationships. And this is why many grow up in a heterosexual relationship. They get to a certain point in their life where they're starting to connect to their emotions and feelings and now they realise actually that they're not attracted to males or females, the opposite gender, but now they're attracted to the same gender. There's a reason for that and that is usually they're more connected to their own emotions as they're getting a bit older for many of these people and they start realising that the soulmate part of themselves has actually got this attraction. Now the key is with all of this is God designed us in such a way that there is this huge variety of, if we could call it sexuality, or gender bias, there's this huge variety of gender bias inside of anyone, inside of the souls of, of, of all of us. So some of us will have dominant masculine characteristics, some of us have dominant feminine characteristics and there'll be this huge variety anywhere in between that. Just like there's a huge variety with music. Some of you feel like you're tone deaf and you can't sing at all, right? And others feel like totally musical. They just pick up a musical instrument, any musical instrument from any age and away they go and play it. How did that happen? Well that happened through a whole variety of different characteristics that come. So God's created this whole variety of characteristics in this soul. And what we're doing when we're talking about the soulmate discussion is we're focused primarily on the intergender or the sexual characteristics of the soul, if you like. Does that make sense? But in reality, the soul has lots and lots of characteristics and attributes. And by soul, I'm talking the whole soul here, not one half of the soul, which you are. I'm talking about the combination of the two halves. Because remember, how God sees you, actually, is not how you're currently seeing yourself. How God sees you is as this one soul even if you're in two different physical forms. And when I say two different physical forms, once you incarnate, your half of the soul is attracted to a physical form and a spirit body form, and the other half of your soul is attracted to a different spirit body form and a different physical body form. But from God's perspective, you are still one soul. Does that make sense? 